Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Slash. Uh, it's really hard to follow a stage about psychedelics They're talking about data. Um, so I'm Jay Das. I'm the president and founder and partner of Sapphire Ventures. And we have been investing in data for a long time, all the way from MySQL onwards. And um, I wanted to you know, have Sudeesh, who's the CEO of ThoughtSpot, joining me on this conversation. Thank you, Jay, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. My name is Sudhish Nair. I'm the CEO of ThoughtSpot, like Jay said. Only in Finland, I think, you start with magic mushrooms and MDNA, <laughs> and then follow with the data analytics. So I'm glad that we started with it. Now let's get into analytics. So, Sudhish, so uh, you know, we have been investing in data for I don't know how long. We are invested in MySQL, Alteryx, Jaspersoft, Looker. How come the data dilemma still hasn't been solved? Like, why do we need ThoughtSpot still? Because we are not interested in solving. We are interested in making money in data. I am partly joking, but partly serious, in the sense that analytics uh, should go away. I mean, I really mean that. I am speaking as a CEO of data analytics company. Analytics has become too much about analytics and not enough about outcomes. Like, why are we doing analytics? I'll give you a quick example. Uh, like maybe 15 years ago, 10 years ago, when you were taking a taxi, you had no idea what time will you get there and how much it's going to cost, right? Are, are there anything more important, any other KPIs more important for a taxi commuter than estimated time of arrival and the money that's going to cost you? No. Today, yeah. we take it for granted that it happens. Why is that happening? Analytics. Yeah. Right? It is real-time traffic, it is weather, it's the location. All of those things are coming together. But what do you not think about? Analytics. In the world of business, though, it's too far. So yeah. there's too much money invested in doing analytics as opposed to focusing on outcomes. Yeah. And it's also all about dashboards, right? It is not about taking actions. Like what I see, every time you talk to a startup, and it has to be data-driven, but then they don't know how do you use the data and what does it mean to be data-driven, right? Look, Jay, the, the, the dirty secret of data analytics is that most people are afraid of numbers. Yeah. Because when you speak in numbers, there is no place to hide. It is black and white. Whereas words and opinions, you can look smart by talking about adjectives and all of that stuff. So what happens is, a CFO who's going to a meeting don't want to be responsible for speaking numbers. They would rather have the FPA team feed them a dashboard. Because if something is wrong, you can go and yell at your FPA team. That's how it works. Yeah. So what happens is the status quo of analytics team getting paid to make analytics more complex works for them. Business leaders to make decisions based on gut instinct and um, uh, sort of anecdotes, it, worked, you know, it, it works for them. So somewhere in between, the status quo is maintained. I don't think that is going to be the future, and uh, you know, generative AI and all the new age workforce that's coming in will change it, but that's currently the status. Uh, yeah. So what have you done differently, right? I know I've been on the journey with you like the second time you know, with Nutanix and the ThoughtSpot. H how do you use data to drive your business? Yeah, look, I think uh, I'm a believer that Experience matters. I believe that human experience, our knowledge, is extremely important. It's like Jeff Bezos said, if data and anecdotes are conflicting, I will bet on uh, experience and the anecdotes. However, it is important to make sure that you're able to test the thesis that you believe you know is right to against data. Yeah. And what is happening is that the lack of expressibility is standing in the way. That's, I speak business, I speak English, but I don't speak, let's say, SQL, or I don't speak data schema. Yeah. So there is this, this, this chasm between people who speak data and people who speak business. At ThoughtSpot, what we believe is that if you can bridge it, a, a forward-looking marketing specialist will be able to test the thesis of money that I'm spending on a campaign is it really working yeah. or not? Yeah. And the answer is never going to be from the first question that you're asking. It's almost always the 15th question. And dashboards are like poor, poor way of doing the next level of questioning, right? That's why, you know, we fundamentally believe that dashboards should just go away and die. Uh, no, I love it, like, because I think in the board meetings, you almost use the thought spot as a way to describe the business, 
to all the investors and you know, as we are talking about what to do. So maybe you can talk a little bit about ThoughtSpot, like how are you changing analytics and why you know, it's very different than what we have seen previously. So the, the topic of today's session is uh, noise and signal, right? There is so much data, everyone is generating data, we are all sitting here and generating data and the data is captured and processed. The question is how hard is it becoming to really make sense of it? And uh, without talking about ThoughtSpot, I can tell you the ThoughtSpot mission in the sense that there is a book that uh, a person, a professor in Toronto named Shaquille Chaudhry, he wrote about a topic called deep diversity. And it is important to bring the connectivity here because human brain, uh, let's say you're crossing a busy street in um, a loud, you know, loud, loud city like New York or London. Yeah. At any given point in time, apparently 11 million bits of information is coming to your five sensory yeah. input that uh, we have. 11 million of those. So how does the brain process 11 million? The answer is it can't. So what it does is it quickly figures out how to chop and slice it into pieces and then focus on approximately 40 to 50. So the most important ones. If there is a hot dog vendor smell coming to my nose, but there's a yellow cab coming to hit me, obviously I'm focusing on the yellow cab. The, the reason why this is important for uh, diversity is that, you know, that is why we are biased against people who don't look like us. Yeah. But in the world of analytics, the ability for people to communicate freely, that is the ability to uh, connect all the sensory input, process them in the brain, and then act. That's yeah. what human machine is doing. In the new era of generative AI, we are doing this, we are improving those three things. So number one, uh, computing power is exponentially increasing. And number two, uh, the energy, you yeah. know, there is so much more energy creation that is happening. And the most important thing that changed with generative AI is that we are fundamentally changing the input output. Can I express through natural language, yeah. not just SQL. SQL is so structured and so limited. Can I use natural language to express my desires to a system? The system comes to me and says, Sudish, here is what you need to know, yeah. but here is what you asked for. Yeah. And can I start a journey of exploration with no tax on your curiosity? That is what ThoughtSpot is trying to do for business That's use right. cases. Yeah, and you know, it's always been the case that with analytics, you only looked at the data that was there and tell you what happened, right? It was never the case where it would be predicting, okay, what is this data actually telling you? Because then you would go and kind of go to a data scientist or somebody else to do that, right? Yeah. But with now, with your platform, I think it's kind of this whole evolution where you can ask the question, okay, what did the data say? Why is my sales going down over here? But then you can also say, okay, what is my sales going to be in the next year? Look, I think... Um I'm very passionate about the idea of fundamentally making analytics invisible and outcomes visible. And I, I want you to know that I would like all of you to go sell and buy ThoughtSpot wherever you are. But that's not the primary point. If you are interested, two of my colleagues are there, Lena and Penelope, they can help you. What I believe passionately is that we need to move away from the idea of asking questions that are pointed. Every, they, you don't want cul-de-sac, you don't want like alleys that doesn't go anywhere. You want to start an explorative journey. Every time you're asking a what happened question, what you're really asking for is why it happened. Yeah. Like how many customers churned? How many customers left me today? Why are you asking that? Because I want to know what is causing them to churn. How can I make it better, right? So going from what happened to why it happened to what will happen and oh crap, I don't know what will happen. I don't like what is going to happen. Let me change what will happen for the better. So this transition, the journey from what happened to why it happened to what will happen to what if I could change, cannot be decoupled from the business. Yeah. Because data people have the insight. They have the left brain. Business has the right brain. They have the knowledge. If these two brains, our hemispheres are not talking to each other, you can't go from what happened to why it happened to what will to what if. And that is why generative AI is a fundamental game changer because yeah. they all can speak That's right. the language of English or German or you know, Finnish. Yeah. And you can also analyze all the data in the way we actually 
talk about things, right? Like you can have, uh, you know, come up with a dashboard if you want, come up with a pie chart, but it can also give you back the results yep. in actual text that people can understand and not have to decipher the data that's being shown up. Right? Like, I mean, when I say, you know, dashboards should die, I really mean that in a positive way, in the sense that, like we were talking in the backstage uh, there, um, sometimes in the world of business, it is so hard to ask the right question. Like, the data has it. The, the, like, uh, how many, so there is a customer, uh, Schneider Electric, uh, yeah. I really like this story. It's like over 100 you know, plus countries, uh, extremely large workforce. Imagine if uh, a country like Indonesia is not performing well, whatever, let's say employee retention as an example. Hypothetically speaking, let's say they're not doing well. In the boardroom, you make decisions at an aggregate level. Oh, Indonesia is not performing well, Brazil is. Let's just focus on Brazil. However, Indonesia is not monolith. There could be 100 teams, and maybe there is this one hiring manager, and she's doing a bang-up job. She's yeah. hiring well, she's recruiting well, motivating well. And guess what? She's punished because Indonesia is not doing well. Decision-making yeah. almost always happens in aggregates. And that's what is wrong with the old BI and analytics, because ideally what you want is when you ask, why is Indonesia not performing well? The system should answer and yeah. should say, hey, did you know, though, there is this young lady who is doing an amazing job of recruiting, motivating, and delivering value. And that noise yeah. and signal ratio that is automatically amplified is only possible if machine learning works. And we haven't had that in our system because, like I said, it works for the machine yeah. learning teams to go crunch the numbers without ever knowing why am I doing it. Yeah. I know Python, but I don't speak retention. That's right. So a platform approach is required here. I don't know if ThoughtSpot is going to be that company, but I can guarantee you that the way we stop using Alta Vista Maps to moving Google Maps, just like the way we go from yellow cabs to Uber, this is a one-way street. We will not be doing analytics the way we used to. Well, I hope, really hope that ThoughtSpot is the one <laughs> that, that does it for us. Um, maybe talk a little bit about generative AI, right? I think ThoughtSpot was started kind of before generative AI really took hold, but yeah. it had a lot of, you know, vision was the same thing, that, hey, we want to make analytics more search-based like what people are used to. How has generative AI kind of changed the product and how you're looking at, you know, as you go in the next four or five years as ThoughtSpot evolves? If you have young children, you sort of know that zero to two is kind of a difficult time because they don't speak, you know, they are almost always like angry or cranky and there's one of three things going on, like hungry, sleepy, or want to poop, right? And you're just guessing. But something magical happens after two for most children once they start speaking. Their ability to learn just goes through the roof, yeah. right? From the very early civilization, People learn through speaking. Even before words written, people huddle around the fire. Elders will tell the stories, don't make houses here because there is going to be flood coming. They will draw pictures, right? We are who we are because we learn constantly, and we learn constantly because of our ability to speak naturally. We're sitting here around. You can watch this video on YouTube later, but this is special. You are here, you can see me, you can see my pauses. Yeah. the way we are communicating with each other, these things are adding color and texture to the conversation. Now think about how we communicate with computer. We computer we, with computer, you don't speak English, you speak code. Forget about code. The keyboard is so stupid that it is ASDF. I mean, just think about how archaic it is, but that we have assumed like that's how it should be. Just like 10 years ago, we used to think that the only way to get a cab would be to have a totally random transaction to happen. I come out, stand in a random corner, raise my hand, a random taxi driver gets up in the morning, drives around, and these rude random events happen, and somehow a commercial transaction happens. And we used to take it for granted, yeah, that's how taxis are. Yeah. Today we don't. We don't get out of here without knowing the rating of the, what kind of car, where is it, what time will I get there, how much it's going to cost. We take it for granted, I believe, Generative AI, forget the current noise, okay? The, the people and the drama and all of that. This is all going to settle, there is hype and all of that. But at the core of it, generative AI is going to open up the bandwidth 
where we will think that just like pointing and clicking a S SDF thing is going to be archaic, we can communicate with an intelligent system yeah. our needs, aspirations, likes, dislikes, discomfort, and it can come back to you. Yeah. And if we can enable that, there will be magical use cases yeah. happening. And just like that kid who is growing up faster and learning after two, we might be able to build amazing intelligent systems. Yeah, I, I think like the way we interact with applications are going to change completely. Right? It's all going to be voice-driven or text-driven the way we talk to each other, right? Applications should be like that, right? Because intelligent systems... Why don't you tell me a little bit about this? I didn't want to flip uh, it on you, but uh, when you look at the noise, with this AI plus AGI yeah. and numbers versus words, where is the early ecosystem going and where are you making the bets? Uh, yeah. So the early ecosystem definitely is all about enabling all our apps and all our products that we are invested in to have an ability to, you know, have voice enabled or, you know, the kind of conversational enabled, right? But very quickly what conversation kind of goes down to is actually searching for all the product, right? So conversation and search is, a, is going to go hand in hand because as soon as you start, like you see that with yep. your customers, right? It becomes a knowledge base and it's this intelligent system, as you said, and people start asking all kinds of questions to it. Right, because it's so a different way of, of uh, interface than when you type. Because with the type, it's very static. You can, it's one way, two way. But a conversation, you think it's another human being on the other side. So I that's dramatically going to change. But I agree with you. I think something uh, revolutionary like an Uber or a DoorDash built on the generative AI platform is still not out there. Uh, that is an important point. You know, um, I, I thought spot, I challenge our company we are all over search. But let's just come out of analytics and think about search. Why are we searching? We are searching because we are already lost. When you get up in the morning and go to school, when you go to work, you don't search the direction, right? Because you know it. If there is a traffic accident, it should come back and say, hey, don't take the normal route, take a different route. In the world of analytics, while the rest of the world is catching up to search, ThoughtSpot, I want to move even farther. Because we have been on search and AI for the last uh, few years. As the world is catching up, I want to take it, the company ThoughtSport to the next frontier, which is, why search? If I have the data, if I know your intent, if I know what your business value priorities are, why can't I come to you and tell you things before you ask me? So we have built this product capability called Monitor, and our thesis is, I want analytics to go away. So a lot of you are startup founders, you are building other applications, all of your applications have data, and data requires analytics. And I am pretty sure some of you probably are building analytics. My, uh, my request is that don't do it. Focus on one thing that you do well, and let us do analytics for you, because our thesis is ThoughtSpot should be invisibly accessible through all of your applications in a way that it tells the customer, the user, yeah. that you are going off course, and when you are lost, you can search. So taking proactive monitor of your business KPIs in ways that are bespoke, where it doesn't add more noise to your life, and then delivering what to why to what if to what will, all embedded through other applications where you're not thinking about ThoughtSpot. Yeah. Just like in Uber, I don't think about Google Maps, even though Google Maps is powering a lot of those in the back end. That is the future yeah. that I wish to see analytics uh, deliver. So maybe talk a little bit about generative AI and the ethics and you know, all the people are worried about what do you think of the regulations? Do you think regulations will really stop innovations? Can it actually even regulate what the bad behavior that people are worried about with generative AI? Uh, look, I think this is very early, and I am definitely not the foremost expert to speak, but my opinion is that in coming here in Europe, I don't want to poo-poo the idea that government should take an active part in it, because unlike other technologies, fundamental building block that we are building will require some level of ethics and guidelines, particularly when it comes to the weights and biases behind the data that is being trained on. Yeah. For example, just like that two-year-old kid that I talked about, if you have a two-year-old kid, as a parent, your huge responsibility to shape this little thing into a responsible human being. And trust me, you can shape that baby into anything that you want. Yes. You can shape that baby into a loving boy or a loving girl, or you can have somebody that hates and pisses off everybody because you have that power. Why? Because they're learning from the model that your parents are building at home. The same thing applies to the formative days of model. Right now, what we are seeing is very early. There are lots of data, there are a lot of models. 
And it is not a good thing that the largest models, that the most high-performing models currently, are fully closed-sourced yes. when it comes to the weights and biases and the fine-tuning models behind it. I don't think that's a fair thing to do. I like the fact, as much as I'm not a huge meta Facebook when it comes to uh, the products, I like what they've done with Llama, where everything is available. Yeah. Will it be the Linux for operating system for this? I don't know. But I do think that in this specific thing, uh, it is very critical. Uh -huh. Because, I mean, look at this place, right? I mean, I was asking the person who was putting makeup on, would you have the right shade for me? Because everyone is blonde here, right? <laughs> and she said, no, I have it. This is the story wherever you go. We are all somewhat like clickish. So when the data that you are going to use impact the whole world, it needs to be intentionally built without biases. Yeah. And that's not something we are there yet. Yeah. I actually think regulation is, you know, there has to be some kind of guideline regulation. But I also think that that's an opportunity for entrepreneurs to figure out. But will like, it stifle innovation, though? I, I, I don't think so. I, I don't think ever that regulations have ever stifled. Like, you know, look, GDPR was something that people are all talking about and saying, hey, it's going to cause lots of issues. But in some ways, that has actually not stifled an innovation. And people have figured out ways around it to meaning provide solutions that enables you to do GDPR. So yeah, I, I, you know, it's always like regulations are never perfect. But I think over time, if you don't have any regulations, you know, as you said, you're going to train these models to with all the data that you don't know where it's coming from. And maybe you, know, you don't like to have that kind of models you know, when you're yeah. using an application. And uh, this is an important point. Again, within ThoughtSpot, we have taken a very uh, opinionated approach that we use large language models for intent capture only. Because they're not good for numbers and analytics. So what we have done is to take the intent and use our system to securely and govern the data model that the customers are running inside, so they have visibility into it. But these things require time. Yeah. Uh, look, there will be a lot of fad, a lot of noise, a lot of machine, and I know that a lot of investors are <laughs> jumping in and then learning the hard way. But I don't know if the DoorDash and the Ubers of this is even founded yet. Yeah, that's right. Well, let's turn a little bit about founder's journey, right? Because you built Nutanix, yep. $10 billion company, took them to $1 billion in sales. You're doing that again with ThoughtSpot. What are the learning? There are lots of startup founders here. What, what are the key things that you have learned through these? Actually, you had a journey even before Nutanix, yeah. right? A startup journey. What have made you so successful? I'll make it, uh, so instead of uh, what made me successful is like making all the mistakes and then not making them again. But if I were to look back and summarize uh, them into three things, number one is uh, focus. Uh, it is so important that you do one thing really well and then get paid before you do the next thing. Uh, don't, I mean, founders, specifically technical founders, have this thing to just keep building and have no respect for sales or GTM. Sales is one of the most noble profession there is. You are actually solving for value yeah. for problems the customers are having, which means founders should respect sales and do one thing and do it really well. Second thing is, don't listen to any of us who have done this before sitting on a stage like this and pontificating. Because all of us have been lucky in some way or other. None of us are uh, infallible. You know, all the way from Elon Musk to Sam Altman's of the world. If you don't know them completely as a person, this is all a show, a charade that, that you're actually getting to see here. So do not trust any of our advices as that something will work for you. You will have to do your own thing. So that's number two. I've become an iconoclast in my own mind. I don't trust any of these people if I don't know them well. We both know each other for the last 10 years. I'll call him but I will not listen to someone who's actually on Twitter. And the last thing is that it is so important to remember how lucky we are and be grateful for everything that we have because I guarantee you, entrepreneurial journey, it is really shitty. There will be days where you just want to say, what the heck am I doing this for? And why am I doing this to myself? And if you want to have the ability to sort of keep moving forward, you need to figure out how to be grateful. And trust me, if you don't know what you should be grateful, it is because you're not looking. This is special. Yeah. And uh, that's my third yeah. thing, be no, grateful. I, I think also great founders are always self-aware. Because they, you know, no matter what they might project outside, they always know what their weaknesses are. And they kind of go in and surround themselves with yeah. people that can fill their weaknesses, right? Yeah. That, that, that is like, for me, I think the best founders and the best CEOs are the best you know, people who can hire and motivate and kind of get people to kind of do the best they can do. 
I remember when I met Jay early on 10 years ago, they were just founding. He's also a founder of the firm. And uh, it, it was my first entrepreneurial journey at Nutanix as well. And um, it is the point that he just made is so important. You know, as founders, sometimes it is important to remember that uh, it is, you know, as more su successful you become, you'll be surrounded by people who want to get something out of you and they say yes to you and you can be in a bubble. And it, there's nothing worse than being in a bubble. So one of the things is make sure you have good family and good uh, friends who can always bust the bubble and say, hey, don't get too far out of your uh, yeah, comfort zone. Yeah. Uh, what's the last thing you want to leave with the, with the startup founders here? Enjoy. Enjoy life. This is the ride. There is no destination out there. The journey itself is the destination. Enjoy this. this yeah. is, these are the good old days. Yeah. And I would say just go start companies out there. That's the only way you're going to learn how to build and you know, scale and create companies of consequence, as we call them. Talk to ThoughtSpot. Yeah, get investment from uh, Sapphire, a great, great <laughs> firm. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much.